Hello my soccer universe and welcome to a long overdue review of what happened in the Netherlands and in France. I was itching and going back and forth. Should I do a video after what happened uh, to, with Messi? I decided in the end, nah, let's wait for the entire round because there was the huge Lens Marseille game going up. And if you haven't realized so for now, while the off the field stuff sometimes features here, I'm focused mainly on the on field here, which I still think is more important. However, most journalists seem to disagree with me and try to generate stories. But we'll briefly talk about uh, the messy situation as well. And of course, we have to ask a question did he play his last game for PSG? already um, and Messi also gets us a little bit into the train wreck that is PSG they will most likely become champions uh, they rebounded from a really really bad home loss to Lorient which uh, so weirdly enough was kind of the opposite of their home win against Lens which seemingly sealed the title for them with Lens being better and then losing it uh, with, with a red card now a red card kind of I don't want to say handed the game to Lorient, but definitely uh, helped uh, them and PSG did not go in there. So that's the first train wreck. The other train wreck, of course, uh, are Ajax, who have a third of a season as you can. By Ajax's standard, this is just horrific. You are out of European competitions. Okay, that's fine. Uh, potentially because you know you have uh, you had some show showings although Na Napoli re really showed you up uh, in the Champions League you have no chance for the title anymore uh, you were a little bit in in contention but ever since the World Cups uh, ended Ajax have not been good you hang everything literally everything you hung on the Dutch Cup and you lost that one uh, to PSV in uh, such a weird manner. Um, then, and the team that also had beaten you really, really, really badly just before that. So everything kind of the, uh, is not working for Ajax at the moment. It's, uh, it looks even that Ajax are not going to make a Champions League and they will be in the Europa League next season. Which reminds me of one of the TIFOs that the Ajax fans put up uh, the game against PSV where yeah, we have all the money and all the PSV fans are crying. Well, they're crying no more. And my words after they lost last year's cup final to PSV that this might signal a change. It definitely didn't. So it is PSV's time, oh, jersey that I'm wearing here proudly that kind of salvaged their season to a certain degree because you know Feyenoord's title is gone but PSV pipping Ajax and Gagarin Cup that does not sound so bad and I would say we'll start with this cup final which was an unusual no, I, I don't want to say characteristically uh, touchy affair between two of uh, the two biggest teams in the Netherlands although I think Feyenoord will have to say some, something about that as well but when it comes to titles those are the two big ones so a topper in, in the final at the Coep which to me adds like this other, other, other level because it's the three rivals in the Netherlands the big three and the two play in the stadium of the third adding yeah, whatever. <laughs> um, it, in any case, uh, the game was a really, really touchy affair um, with Ajax maybe having a little bit more the advantage in the first half. They took a goal uh, where Bergman goes uh, through. Bergman, who of course played for PSV before, uh, before going to Spurs and then coming back uh, now for Ajax. Although I think he started out at Ajax and, and, and so on. So, you know, I'm not sure if it's as contentious as Berghaus going from Feyenoord to Ajax. Um, but his shot gets deflected and it's a, a Branthwaite own goal that give Ajax the lead and they really thought they had it. Uh, had a few more chances, um, we, you know, the game was even but with, with that advantage Ajax actually thought they could pounce. However, it's Dorgan Azar uh, who equalizes in the 67, then it was really a back and forth affair. Again, Ajax going a little bit more for it, but quickly it came out to a stalemate. And then the most annoying thing of them all. I could not watch this game live. I watched it on a replay and the replay stopped just before overtime. I didn't see anything else and then I saw the highlights. But I really felt it was a very... Um, hotly contested final. It was an interesting final for sure. 
uh, and it goes to penalties and this penalty shootout reminded me so much of the one between Milan and Juve in the 2003 Champions Final. Tadic and Azar, I, I go for convert. But I think then uh, there are three people hitting the post. I want to say probably Ramali and Tinga, uh, to Timber with a few saves in there as well. Um, there was a sequence of four penalties in succession missed. So it was one, one after three penalty takers. Uh, then uh, uh, Gotts converts, Razi converts, and then Alvarez, it's Alvarez, uh, misses as well. And it's Fabio Silva on loan from, uh, coming from um, Wolves that gives the trophy to PSV. And so the Eindhoven team is celebrating not only their second win over Ajax within a week, which in itself must be really, really sweet, but a second consecutive cup title, which uh, is rather remarkable in an era that was all Ajax. But as I said, it's the end of an era. Um, I think there's a big regrouping and I think the next head coaching appointment for Ajax will be a rather interesting one. Uh, it got even worse for Ajax uh, in the league, but before that uh, the match it had to be at uh, Brenton because of crowd trouble in Groningen ended with a 1-0 for, Na for Nijmegen, which meant that uh, Groningen were more or less relegated at that point already. And then uh, the only one one against go ahead, Eagles, you see down, down there, uh, it's now sure Groningen are relegated. But we're gonna go Sparta against PSV, which was, was probably the one game where potentially Ajax thought, you know, Sparta have been good this season, maybe they can get something. And it was a uh, kind of tight, tight but in the end, El Khazi, it's good to win in the panel, they should, 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 should that, gets a late winner for PSV. Who would have deserved that one anyway? Ajax themselves uh, could have kept the pressure a teeny bit up. However, a uh, nil-nil against RZ. Yes, they created more chances, but it was RZ who I think hit at least once the post. So uh, it was overall probably a well-deserved uh, draw by RZ, who are kind of the fourth power in the Netherlands at the moment. And for that result means now that there's a huge gap between PSV and RZ, mean, uh, Ajax, meaning that Ajax will most likely be in the Europa League for the upcoming season. And then the Europa League, thanks to PSV winning the cup. That has also, also, also been said. Uh, Twente uh, win a 3 0 against Emmen. They go back uh, in the uh, Conference League um, play of top top spots. And then Feyenoord get a routine 2 0 win at Excelsior. Both goal, goal scored by uh, Jimenez. They're a point away of clinching the title. It's that close, and we see as much in the table. It's just a point. Uh, we have now Feyenoord uh, are set on Champions, PSV go in Champions League qualification. Ajax, thanks to PSV's Cup win, will make it into, into Europa League. Uh, that at the moment look rather, rather safe in the Conference, uh, conference League spot. And then uh, the next four make the playoff for the last spot in the Conference League qualification. On the bottom, Groningen and Cambuur are now down for sure. Uh, Excelsior and Emmen are fighting who will go into the play of spot and um, potentially Volendam can get dragged into there as well. Vitesse also kind of a little bit in there, but I think they are at the moment uh, safe uh, and it's also reflected in the expected standings. Upcoming rounds, Feyenoord can seal a title at home against the go-ahead Eagles. Ajax have to go to Groningen, a uh, new uh, freshly reggae re PSV against Sittard. And, you know, I, I, there is not much going in, in their favor. Ajax have to also then run the rough against Utrecht PSV against Herrenveen. It really, really looks like that Ajax are not going to make it into the Champions League unless something really, really crazy is happening. Let's go uh, to France for another cup final and boy was that a non-competitive one. Unfortunately, a cup final that I could not really watch, uh, which I'm a little bit uh, sad about. At least I saw the highlights after half an hour this game. I mean, after 20, 20 minutes this game, game was done. Uh, Toulouse came out storming all over Nantes. Costa scoring the first two goals in the fourth and in the tenth. Then 23rd and 31st, uh, Dalinga adds two more. The game is done at the halftime. Also has Tasmino due to uh, potential protest against himself. President Macron did not greet the players on the pitch, but in the tunnel, which I think is a pretty chicken move, uh, if you ask me. But I know that at the moment, tensions are high in France themselves. Uh, not just pull, pull my back because uh, Abogal makes it 5-1. I think it's the first title for at least this version of Toulouse. 
a team that has been promoted had a pretty amazing season overall. Overall, a very well deserved title, and although they have not done well in League One, uh, in the upcoming fig fixtures, I still decided to put them up here because if you win a title, you deserve to be on top of things. Uh, going over to League, uh, I think uh, the past week the big story was of course what happened to uh, PSG at home. I just want to say that uh, Lyon is starting to be in a really 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 good form. A 2-1 win at Strasbourg. Strasbourg still fighting against relegation. It was a comeback win uh, because they were down 1-0 you know, just before the half. Uh, Lokeba and Kakare uh, had turned it around for them. Uh, also a rather remarkable result, Monaco kind of losing totally the steam now. Uh, it's they. I really thought that they might uh, push for a second uh, or third spot and they have been uh, dropping points a little bit too much. Um, losing at home to Montpellier 4-0. Montpellier surely brought more fans than Monaco had to there because we know they are uh, they're little fans. Uh, but it was especially a second half uh, de um, deconstruction. Nordin had given uh, Montpellier the half halftime lead. Uh, and then they scored three from 64 to 79th. It's the first time in this past uh, week and a, a few days that Montpellier is scoring four goals. So they are definitely good goal scoring form. Uh, not so good form is will still start Reims uh, losing at Clermont foot kind of a little bit of a, a note there. Um, we had then of course PSG losing at home to Lorient and fully deserve it so uh, Lorient just being better and being more efficient and taking care of PSG's uh, troubles. Yes they are helped that Hakimi gets two stupid yellow cards which of course results in a red red card and Mbappe scores probably the weirdo goal of the season where the goalie the, the play has not been whistled that is that the goalie has, has has the ball he puts it in front of him Mbappe takes it and scores it's 1-1 one, one, but that's not even enough for them to get get, get the win because Young uh, just 10 times later make, make, makes it 2-1 and then lay, lay down it's a 3-1 and there was even a uh, disallowed goal for offside in there and to make matters even worse, as I said, we talk a little bit, bit about Messi. Messi uh, is ignoring the fact that because of that loss, they're not having a day off. Still goes to Saudi Arabia, pieces of half of the team and the total fan, fan base is banned by the president of PSG, who never does things like that. He's the first player banned by the club in over a decade. And that's Messi that you're talking about. I mean, this is not nobody. Uh, everyone knows this guy. Um, he issued an apology, was probably accepted by the team, but I have to say it seems to me that that ship has sailed. Messi and PSG, I think it was good at the first half of the season. It was really, really good, but it was really, really good for too little. Uh, the expectations were too high. It seems like he might extend his, his career. Everything has been talking about that he might leave now. And, and anyway, and the whole trip to Saudi Arabia, anyways, ill-timed in, 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 in a way because they had a major days off before that, but he had to go with 14 suitcases to Barcelona. That does not suit, sit well uh, with anyone. And then for me, it also doesn't sit well that he's an ambassador for Saudi Arabia. He has, he is, has really, really bad counsel. This man, I have to say, ever since he won the last Champions League in 2015, his career has been majorly mismanaged. I really have to say that. And so, yeah, the uh, question is where will Messi go? But that's not part for this league review. And with PSG's frailties, PS, uh, uh, their eternal rivals OM take a little bit advantage of that. Yes, they were one down to relegation threatened Osea, but then a double between, uh, from Unde and Alexis Sanchez, who has been actually underreported but a really 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 good 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 player in Italy potentially one of the best in the league um, turn turn around within two minutes and OM get the important win go closer to PSG and open up a title race that may not have been uh, open and then uh, Lance joins the party with a one deal win at Toulouse Openda scoring that that goal and then in a huge relegation battle Brest beat Nantes, who just was destroyed in the cup final 2 0, and Nantes are now look, uh, in the real, real, real trouble. And I think it's worth it to see the, uh, the, the table after this round 
how the title race suddenly opened up with uh, OM only five points behind and then lost uh, six points behind and no additional spot uh, in Europe because to lose then in 13th have now this Europa League spot. So it's a wide open affair uh, uh, up there. It's a real, real battle with Lille, Rennes and uh, potentially Lyon also can get in there. And that was the pretext for uh, this uh, past round. Um, Rennes completely losing the plot they are way too inconsistent uh win lose win lose win lose win lose this is not how you get into the european places and you have to really really start a streak uh losing um losing at nice uh two one then we had uh Reims. they're getting back a win i actually saw uh, some, 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 something it was a good first half by Reims. uh Muneta, uh getting the first goal then ito missing a pen penalty the second half lil was a little bit more pressing but uh, Reims, uh hang on to, to that one but it was all about loss against om what an atmosphere Really, really good. Um, there was an early goal for Alexis Sanchez that was disallowed in the eighth minute because of a foul on Danzo in the build up. Austrian player uh, has his the same, but uh, as soon as Lars scored the go ahead goal through Fofana, a really nice header. Um, that meant that Lars kick kicked their next gear. Openda gives them a 2 0 lead, and I really thought they're gonna take apart OM. However, uh, Dimitri Payet, shortly before the end, pulls one back, uh, got a little bit tight, but in the end, Lance hang on to a really, really big win, which might mean that they go in the Champions League next season. Major, major success. Uh, Monaco also get back to winning ways. Uh, you see then a few um, interesting results. I mean, Lorient against Brest was a Breton derby, a Western Breton derby, I have to say. Uh, but I think for me, the big one on the afternoon was not losing at home to Strasbourg, meaning that Strasbourg kind of looks safeish now, but not in serious relegation trouble. Uh, for a team that just won the cup the last year and had, had, had a good showing, it's really, really bad. But the game was surely the 5-4 between uh, Lyon and Montpellier. And it was such a crazy game that I actually had to pull it up as, um, as the um, title for this video. A comeback for the ages. Not only was it a comeback for the ages, two players scored four goals in there. Two players scored four goals. How often do, 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 does this happen? Like I said, Really, really ni nice, nicely worked uh, goal. Uh, Verbacola just keeps it in play, and like, like I said, then in the short corner makes it one in the 31st minute. And Leon are up and running. But Wahi, within a minute, scores two goals. Both of, of the times the Leon defender uh, imploded right there. Uh, and it's 2 1 at the half for Montpellier. Gets even worse for Leon because Wahi again double, uh, it makes a double 50 30, 50 50 50. Completes not only his hat trick but four goals uh, within you know 15 minutes plus stoppage time. But in between the 40th and the 55th, he scores four goals. Montpellier are cruising. Uh, just a, a few minutes later, Lacazette pulls one back 59th again. A city of Barcola. Then a day and Lovren heads it in in the 70th. So 10 minutes later, it's 3-4. Lacazette equalizes again. A city of Barcola. A really good connection right, right there in the 82nd. And then deep, 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 deep into stop, in, in stoppage time. A penalty is awarded for Lyon and Lacazette completes not only his uh, poker, as they say in Spain, gets also the win for Lyon in almost unimaginable fashion. And Lyon are on a hot streak at the moment. Uh, and then PSG, a routine win, 3-1 at Troyes. Mbappé scoring another weird goal that came off the crawl cross, but disoriented goalkeeper, and then he heads it in from short distance. When Vitinha made it 2-0, you thought the game is done and dusted. Uh, Chavalarin in the 83rd pulls from Begin Fabian Ruiz a few minutes later. Makes it a 3-1, kind of settling the nerves for PSG a teeny bit. Because now PSG, six points with four games to go. It seems like it will be their time. But Lens are now in second place. Uh, have a cushion over Marseille. And are set to go into the Champions League group stage with OM potentially going into the qualification. We have also Monaco relatively safe in this Europa League spot. But as I said, it's Toulouse who get the other Europa League spot. And then it's a battle. And I think Lille, Rennes, Lyon are all in that running for that last Conference League spot. And no one actually won the Conference League. They want something better. But you know, you get a European comp competition. 
uh, might not be all that bad. Um, the league is more or less settled, you know, it's a little bit between second and third and exactly for this conference league spot and maybe if Monaco have a bad turn they could also fall back but I honestly don't see it. On the bottom though it's tied between Auxerre and Nantes and at the moment is Auxerre just a teeny bit ahead, ahead of Nantes. Strasbourg and Brest seem now relative in relative safety but you know you cannot really afford much. Um, you get here the upcoming upcom games. I think the big name matchup is between Monaco and Lille. We also have a replay of the cup final, which is crucial for Nord. I, I, I actually want to say with Nord uh, in, in there, we have to shift almost our focus a little bit to that. And then uh, two weeks later, Lyon against Monaco. This could be a huge one in this fight for fifth place. Uh, Lille against OM also. Uh, <laughs> Lille, do they roll over? Do they want to go for the Conference League or do they want to... Uh, and help loss finish in the champ in the Champions League spot. That's an interesting question. In any case, that's it from me. Please start, drop a line if you want to add anything. Give a thumbs up. If you enjoyed this video, and I will talk to you soon. Bye. Hey there. I really hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you might enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel and hitting the little bell icon so you get notified whenever something happens in my soccer universe. And with that, have a wonderful day. Bye.